NASCAR driver. Paul Tracy returns to his hometown, Toronto, Canada, and the fans, the media, and his family all want a piece of his time. Come sign up today, guys. Get Paul Tracy's autograph. One fan in particular has taken the PT craze to new heights. So put together like a museum of Paul Tracy stuff. And the rivalry between Paul and Sebastian Bourdais takes a left turn towards disaster. Go, 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 go. But Paul refuses to quit on his home track. I mean, do a couple laps like this. Oh, you're not, you're not, you're not. 750 horses under the hood. Champ cars are fast, furious, and on the edge. And so are the men who drive them. I couldn't have given them any more room. Using turbocharged engines that can hit 230 miles per hour, these drivers have to be fitter and faster than any racers on the planet. I love to compete. I love to win. Now you'll get an exclusive look at what drives them on and off the track. More so than money, it really comes down to pride. And one team's quest, pushing the limits in hopes of winning the championship. No, he's not! Damn it! While competing in 14 races on ovals, permanent tracks, and street courses all over the world. Against the best drivers in the series, man and machine driven to perfection. Race car driver starts now. Hey, Dad. Huh? Give me a hug. Oh, You're bigger than me. My father is quite a piece of work. He's always been the exact same. All the stories, rambling stories, I've heard, heard them all, you know, a million times. The world was built by uneducated and illiterate people, and they've done a damn good job. And then they hand it over to the educated people who have screwed it up. He's a piece of work, is what he is. Oh, you got pictures. Oh, but they're old. They're all pictures are good. Oh, my God. Here he is as a baby. Paul in the bath. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. Where's Patty? She's looking at old pictures of you. I think that was when he oh, when he had so hair, funny. yeah. Oh. <laughs> My guys, how old is he there? Sixteen. Sixteen. He looks so young. He looks like you looks like here. He was young. <laughs> yeah, he looks like CJ, yeah. Does he? Patty, yeah. have you met the old man? Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. My dad's company was a painting contracting company. He painted the CN Tower when I was a baby, him and uh, his brother. I remember when I was in like grade three, my dad took our whole class on like a field trip and he got like some special passes to show us all the, the stuff that you can't get to see, all the back routes and the service elevators and all that kind of stuff, which I, I still remember that, that was pretty cool. Here we are at the CN Tower, pretty high, 1800 feet up there. Yeah, I moved here in 1966. Paul was born 68. He's always lived here. Paul loves it here. That's why he just loves coming back to race here. Graham is my brother, um, and his wife is Pat, and they, they live in England. They always try to arrange it so that we go to a race. And there's the track right there. You, you can see Pitt Road. The traffic is still moving on, on the Lakeshore Boulevard. They don't close that off till nine o'clock tonight. What I suggest now is uh, a drink before dinner. Yes, yes, yes. These guys are all PT fans. Almost every one of them. There's a website called crapwagon.com. It's a forum. And this is people that write on the forum, gathering of the fans. Everybody knows me. They come in, they say, oh, hi, hi, remember me? I say, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you. Paul's a god here. Balls to the wall all the time. How can you not love that? You know, you have to admire that style. You really do. Fierce competitor on the track, and he always speaks his mind, and just a great driver, and he just goes all out every time he's on the track. The pressure's on him a little bit, but he's really relaxed this year, and I think he can pull it off, and we're going to get a repeat of 2003, and you're going to hear a sound like you've never heard before. Media 
is really crazy in Toronto. Toronto, Vancouver, anywhere in Canada, the media is crazy. Hey, Patty, you seen the paper today? It's going to look like a mirror. What do you think about that? <laughs> She's famous. Look, you're a star. P picture in the paper. Oh, my God. If they can get that close up, it's scary. There's a million cameras down there in the pits. You never know who they're pointing at. So don't be picking your nose or anything down there. <laughs> Coming up, as the drivers ready themselves for the race, the entire city of Toronto has come out to party. And one fan of Paul Tracy has turned his obsession into a successful business. I've actually probably got more of Paul Tracy at race member review than Paul has. Paul Tracy in Toronto, there's media everywhere, cameras everywhere. It's a big race, Paul's hometown race. Paul's mom yeah, lives in Toronto. He has a lot of family, you know, a bunch of friends have flown into town. You know, you sort of hope that it doesn't uh, distract him. Come sign up today, guys. Get Paul Tracy's autograph on a t-shirt. Any place there that you think that adding some rear spring is going to hurt you, if not, you should try it. Let's try it. I love Toronto. It's a great city. Uh, I love the atmosphere. I love the Canadian people. They're so nice and so, so enthusiastic. We have the parties, um, these girls that come to the races, uh, you've got the media. So you've got the glamour side, but it does get a bit tiring after a while. <laughs> And being Paul Tracy's teammate makes it more fun because there's more people cheering for me as well. When I got to Canada to immigration, the, the immigration officer was, uh, okay, what are you here for? And then I said, well, I come for the race. Are you driving? I said, yeah, I'm Paul Tracy's teammate. Oh, Paul smiles, come right in, you know, anything you need. So that was nice. Too. It's just an exciting town, it's a fun town, there's a lot to do, and it's a lot bigger than just, you know, a race on a, on a Sunday. There's a lot of stuff going on. Paul Tracy in Toronto is the biggest superstar in the city, especially if you're a race fan. He is a guy that uh, owns a hairdressing shop. My parents live right by his store. That was the area where I grew up, and I met him probably when I was about 17, 18 years old. He used to cut my hair. I guess he couldn't find a good hairdresser in Vegas, so he had to start shaving it. <laughs> That's my excuse. Always been a huge, huge Paul Tracy fan. I've uh, been collecting all these uh, helmets and suits and visors and just about anything else that uh, Paul's ever had, you know. So I've put together like a museum of Paul Tracy stuff. I've actually probably got more Paul Tracy race memory than than Paul has. This was one of Paul Tracy's early uh, go kart things. And actually, one of the first things that got me into collecting race memorabilia, I had a Harley Davidson sign that I used to have here. It was a neon sign, Paul's crazy in Harley Davidson's. And uh, he said, oh, he liked the sign. So I said, oh, have you got anything interesting you'd like to swap? He said, I've got my Penske first test helmet. If you want that one, I'll swap it for your sign. It came to the point where I uh, amassed such a lot of uh, different memorabilia, we decided that uh, we'd open the shop up. He's turned that into a, a pretty nice little business for himself. I guess in Toronto, this is one of the ones that doesn't sell too well. Sebastian Bardet. It's uh, Paul's hometown race. It's my hometown race. It's particularly important for me to put Paul up in front, you know, on the pole in, in front of the hometown crowd. This is a target. That's the championship. You need to give pretty much everything you can at every single moment. My worst day is Saturday. That's where I really feel the pressure to try and make sure we produce an outstanding car. And so many things can go wrong in a single short qualifying session. Sebastian's car is up. He smacked the wall. I made a mistake and, well, brushed the wall. Probably fine. He wasn't starting very well. Might have got a, a lucky break, but we'll see. These guys might get this thing put back together in time. but. Just went by us, so he's going to be coming up.
wasn't gonna be perfect. And just uh, threw it all on the racetrack and I just took the best out of what I had and got the pole position. I was really uh, surprised that we got it. Everything all right with the 21 part? Completely screwed me. Well, I'm just awful. asking because I'm going to ask bike control and people. Yeah, it's not okay. All right. I'll just let them know that. Right? What's going through your mind right now, Paul? I'm pretty disappointed in the thing with Cristiano, he held me up in qualifying. What did he do? He just back up? Yeah, he just was going slow that lap. I was catching him, catching him, catching him. Like, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. Three tenths. Almost two tenths. The officials were here, they know, what, they know what was going on, they saw it, and I guess they'll, they'll address it soon. How do you get your head back into the game? My head's in the game, I'm ready to go for tomorrow. This is John on the front row. He's a racer, he wants to put the hammer down, he wants to go as fast as he can. We can still win, we can win from the back, we don't have to be on pole. Next up, Jimmy Vassar has strong words for PT after the incident with Cristiano D'Amata. You just should hold it for the trailer, man. You don't have to yeah. f bust him out in the paper like that. And a run in with Sebastian has Paul fighting to keep his car on the track. Tracy staying oh. on the racetrack with half a front wing. about some shit been saying in the media. I was you know, pissed, he held me up. You don't even, you just should hold it for the for the trailer, man. You don't have to bust him out in the paper like that. I, I heard him busting me out at Portland when my ignition box went out. He was you crying called him the, the paper. slow poke, man. He's a champion. I didn't say that. Was, I said yeah, I was disappointed in the, in the way it went down. Good job. Oh, you're so bad, yeah. Hey, did he call you a slow poke in the paper? Yeah, what's a slow poke, by the way? What is a slow I poke? I said he was going slow. Uh -huh. He called him a off. slow poke. A Brazilian poke slow, slow, slow poke. poke. I didn't read that. Slow poke, the might have blocked me. It's the same slow poke a week ago he was pulling away from you, second a lap at Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who went home with the trophy? <laughs> you did. <laughs> <laughs> don't be don't be slagging out of my, my teammate on the in the in the press anymore, man. You know, only Tracy. Jimmy, have a good race, man. Right. You too. Have fun. It's good. Hope glad, you, glad you came out, man. I hope you won it. <laughs> hey, Matt, you ready for another champagne shower? Hey, Jose, how come you get all the good-looking girls, eh? I got all the pretty ones. <laughs> look at look at this thing. Got more curves than a drug on ice skates. <laughs> I made a, a good start and I was right on board A and my goal was to stay right on his gearbox and wait for the first pit stop since I couldn't get by him on the track. We pulled the lead and then I caught traffic and PT caught up with us and was right there at the pit stop. Race leader Bourdais makes his first stop on lap 34. Be ready for anything. Keep your down and be ready to go. Tracy's car, contact! Hey, guys, get the nose ready. Get the move, move, move! Yeah, I mean, he had him! He had him right there! He just... Oh, Ah, oh, 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 oh. Hey, Bordet has a flat. Keep going, keep going. Bordet has a flat. You think you can drive in the rest of the way with him? Can I find him? Let me do a couple laps like this. Let me do a couple of laps. Roger that, you're my hero. You know, I'm not about to pull in the pits and give away a win if I, if I don't have to. Paul Tracy with half the car is just flying yeah. here. I'd rather try to go down swinging. 
That's the second time this season that Bourdais and Tracy have tangled on the racetrack fighting for the lead. I thought, well, he lost his front wing, I had a flat, so we're kind of even, but no, because then he keeps running and, you know, he's leading the race. And I was like, damn it, you know, he's going to still win the race without the wing. Quiet, they're not going to do anything. Well, they're going to do they they figures, okay? They're going to hear from me about that, okay? I'm not blind. This is an impressive performance here by Paul Tracy. If you looked at his lap times, they were off, I would say, probably a second and a half from where he ought to have been. And probably the embarrassment in that for everybody else is that while Paul had slowed down, nobody else was going as quick as him still. Just after the break, half a wing, a nine-second lead, and no other driver can catch him. This race is in the bag. No, damn it! That's just one ball down. Devada, the Bell Micro car with a cut tire. He has cracked the wall. Sebastian working from back in the pack. A.J. Allmendinger takes his chance at the lead. Here he goes. Inside. He... Does he get there? He does. Allmendinger makes the pass. Justin Wilson passes Serbia. Serbia now absolutely has his hands full. No. Oh, oh, trouble. Allmendinger clouts the wall on time. Oh. Gets hit by Mario Dominguez. Mario, do you hear us? It's a blind corner. You're talking about a car going well over 130, probably hitting one that's just standing there. It's nothing that feels good ever. Body-wise, I'm, I'm OK. Some bumps and bruises, a little sore, no big deal. More, more uh, mentally hurt than uh, physically. I was pretty disappointed with myself after making that mistake. I mean, I wish I could blame it on somebody else, but that was solely my fault, and, uh, you know, threw it away. Congratulations on your first camp call win of many. In the end, it's AJ's teammate, Justin Wilson, who wins the first race of his young career under the caution flag. I was just so hoping it wouldn't go back to, uh, to green. You know, I just wanted to get his first one under my belt, and then we can go from there. That's the one thing we're going to sort out, you know. Oh, I, I guarantee you we're going to sort it out. Because, yeah, I mean, there's just, there is no, I mean, in the, in, the, in the whole gamut of everything that can possibly go wrong in a motor race, the one thing that I cannot deal with is running out of fuel. Oh, and I hear you, Neil. Like, certainly the years I did this, it never happened, you know? It's just long. The race driver lives his life weekend to weekend. And whatever happens that weekend, 
good or bad, can be the greatest weekend of your life or the worst weekend of your life. Coming up on an all new episode, a woman's perspective on racing from behind the wheel. Catherine Legg is out to become the next champion race car driver. Can she go the distance? You're not going to sacrifice the whole racetrack just for one car, one more. Just figure out how to deal with it. There. How long it takes me to get there, I don't know. I, I really need to just prove that I get there on merit, not because I'm a girl.